What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be fooling around with a title called Stellar Tactics. I've put about five or six hours into this game. Got up early this morning and I'm now recording it in kind of like the late evening. And this is an interesting little title. This is kind of an example of what can happen when like a small team with access to very limited resources tries to make an enormous game that incorporates like EVE Online's combat... Sort of like a colony ship style combat system that takes place on planets. I mean, there's mining, there's salvaging. A lot of it is just procedurally generated and just comes up while you're cruising around the galaxy. But it also comes strapped with a campaign with a narrative storyline and everything else like that that you can play along the way. It's got randomized Diablo style loot. It's got a bunch of starships that you can purchase. It's got randomized Diablo loot. It's got this ground combat lair that you can play around with right now. I'm currently hunting a notorious space pirate from one of the procedural missions that the game will serve up from time to time. It's got houses and things like that, sort of Dune style that you can farm reputation with. It's one of those games that I'm getting the vibe you can sink a lot of hours into. And so that's exactly what we're going to talk about here today. So let's dive on in for about 30 minutes. Let's see if this game is something that you wanted to add to your wish list or if it's something that you wanted to pass on. If after watching this, this game, it, you wanted to get it. The game is in early access. However, it's further along in early access. It's not in fresh early access. They're finishing up the campaign right now. And then I'm pretty sure they're going to be about ready to just release the thing out to the world uh, the steam link is down there you can also find a link to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live but let's see if we can find this space pirate well there's some space pirates right there we're clogged up on a stairwell right now which is not the most ideal of situations that excites me but let's move her on into the room this game uses an ap system for kind of all of your combat and all of your engagements and everything else it looks like we've got two guys inside of here or three guys inside of here Looks like two guys inside of here. This character doesn't have any AP left, but your characters do have special abilities that are granted by their weapons. Right now, she has an SMG. Everybody can have a main weapon and also a side weapon that they can play around with. It actually looks like there's four of them in here. Oh, there's a big one down that way. And this universe is actually sort of interesting because... It's a zombie apocalypse game in space. So while you will be fighting with raiders and other bad guys like that... There's also this thing, like this disease that's moving throughout the galaxy, and it takes over people's brains and they eat human flesh and all that kind of fun stuff, but they're still like able to manufacture and use starships, which makes them sort of like the Reavers, I guess, if you've ever seen Firefly. I don't know how many Firefly fans there are out there. That's kind of like an older niche sci-fi thing now, but Firefly is one of my favorite things in the entire world, one of the only sci-fi universes I ever really got into. And so it's kind of like the Reavers from Firefly if the Reavers were also genetically modified sort of Fallout 3 ghouls, uh, effectively, that crave human flesh. Uh, this station looks like it's got... I don't know if that's an alien. Like, there's big blue guys around. Oh, yeah, there's another guy right there, too. All right, we'll use a special ability on them. Go ahead and fire that on off. Good stuff. Go ahead and put up your shield barrier for the next turn. I need to move him into the room, too. I don't know exactly how it's going to work out. Let's maybe... Do I have the AP to go full auto on this lady? Takes five AP to do that. All right, we'll keep it on single fire then, and we'll just shoot at her torso. Can't really finish her off right now, so we'll kind of just leave it where it's at. The enemy's going to get a salvo. They can fire back at us right now. Got a very lucky crit off at the beginning of the game. As you can tell, probably just from looking at it, this is a low-budget game that's been cobbled together using sort of like, I don't know how many assets or whatever else, but I do recognize some of the icon packs from other games. But it does stand as sort of like a testament to what you can accomplish if you're just like dedicated to getting the damn thing done. And this game has kind of impressed me with the amount of stuff and the amount of things that you can do inside of this on burst fire mode. Put that back on single fire. Go ahead and shotgun blast right there. Unfortunately, he used the defend ability. If you've got a little bit of AP left over at the end of the turn, uh, you can go on defense like that right there, and it'll like soak a big chunk of the damage that you take from the first attack that goes up against you. It's not going to help out that much because most characters in this game depending on what weapons they have equipped and what their stat spread is looking like uh, they will be able to fire like four and five times per turn 
but that's still like a 20% damage reduction. I'm probably going to have to swap him over to his pistol because we're in close contact now. We'll go ahead and waste that guy real quick. And then we'll see if we can put a couple on her. I don't think she's our lady, but she does have a skull, which means she's one of the harder enemies to bring down. We'll see what she does on her turn. She's still a little bit close for the rifle too, so I'll probably swap on over to the laser pistol. There we go. We'll just phaser him down, and now we can take a look at all the loot. A lot of the loot in this game is going to be kind of like World of Warcraft MMO style. It's just going to be junk loot that you can sell to somebody and doesn't really actually actively do anything. But you will want to take a look at the loot list as you're going through because you'll find things like upgraded ion rifles like that right there. It's not as good as what I had. Well, it's actually pretty decent. It's not terrible. I don't hate it. I may actually swap it out. A level one rifle that's out hitting the one that I have right now. You lose a little bit of range, and it is a beam weapon. I'd have to take a look at it and see what it's got going on, but it does have a higher damage cap. Your characters do regenerate and get all their stuff back in between, I guess, engagements with the enemy. Sometimes there's loose loot and things around. The game does have a Baldur's Gate style key uh, you can hold down that will highlight everything in the area that's kind of lootable while you're on these little stations. If I was trying to beeline through and finish this as fast as possible, got a bunch of guys with guns in here too. This little pirate gang, man, they're dug in. All right, so Shotgunner's going to have to move up because she needs to be close to be able to accomplish anything. The entire rest of their team is going to get to move now, so I'm going to go ahead and pop my energy barrier right there just in case anybody decides to get crazy with any of their equipment. It looks like the rest of them are just going to use their turns to close the gap. So it looks like those aggroed a little bit early before we came around the corner to be actually seen. That's going to work to our benefit. That's going to allow us to blast these guys down. I have no idea how long this mission is going to be, by the way. Uh, the game does also have repeatable missions that you can do for various factions. i got to reload. My plasma pistol, unfortunately, is all out of dock a dock all right, we'll light them up real fast. As of right now, I don't know if that's your hit chance right there. It says 71%. I don't know if that's, like, your full hit percentage right there. It's been a while since I played through the tutorial. I came back to this one and was just like, eh, skip tutorial. It's fine. I'm pretty sure it's your chance to get, like, a normal hit. And then, like, the yellow right there is your chance to, like, scuff and get, like, a glancing blow. But I'd have to confirm it inside the game guide, and I haven't done it just yet. Either way, it seems like you almost always hit in this game. It's pretty rare that you fire a shot and miss. And so if you're worried about the game being sort of like a, a miss fest, where RNG dictates a lot of what goes on in the fight, that hasn't been the case for me so far. We'll go ahead and bust a couple rounds at Barbie Q. That's got to be her raider name, huh? All right, well, let's fire another one down there. I've got an ability that gives me an automatic crit when and where I want it, and so I try to use my abilities very liberally in this game because they are home wreckers. Uh, the abilities you get in this game are quite good. Set up along that wall right there and go ahead, just point blank shot. Oh, we missed. Huh, doesn't happen very often, right after I just had the talk about the game not being a misfest because that actually annoys the hell out of me with games like this too. I can't stand it in games where you sit around for turns and turns and turns just being like, miss, miss. Miss, especially in the early game, it's just kind of like shrug for me whenever I play a game that's kind of like that. But anyways, you don't miss that much. At worst, you graze and get like partial damage. Mm, what do I want to do over here? Swap into the sniper rifle, I guess. Yeah. See if we can nail him in the torso right there. It's not a lot of damage, but it was some damage, I guess. Everybody defend up when my melee gets up and in here. She's like the clubber. She's the one that gets it. Oh, I don't have enough AP to do that? Well, bummer. I wish that I had the AP to do that. Did she get hobbled on her turn or something like that? She did, okay. So it's costing her. So when you shoot people in different parts of their body, different things happen in this game. Mm, I would like to go over to, like, burst fire mode maybe right here. 23 damage? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm out of ammo, so unfortunately I got to rap tap bang this thing real fast before we can go any further. Uh, point blank shotgun blasts pretty stingy But we are thinning out the enemy right now barbecue has got to go. Let's go ahead and swap over to burst fire right here She defended a burst fire Wow Actually a little bit shocked about that one still fares fair I guess 
Alright, lots of energy weapons fire going out right now. Each of your characters do have customization, they do have equipment. However, the game has sort of an unorthodox way of approaching skilling. That's going to take me down to right there. Alright, and what I mean by unorthodox is that this game actually has like a utilizing the item system like a Bethesda game. You can see right there her skill with two-handed weapons has increased while she's been smacking this guy. I'm going to use some abilities kind of like even out the numbers right now because they're getting a lot of shots off on me. It's making me feel nervous about my survival prospects. Laser that guy down for one damage. We'll go for a torso shot right there. 13, these guys actually seem to be quite a bit weaker than the others. Yeah, these guys go down quicker, so I think they just had a couple of elites inside of that group that were making it take a little while longer. It's a fully 3D environment, you can rotate everything around how you want, but back to what I was saying, the game has a Bethesda-style skill system, where the more you use a thing, the better you get at it, and that goes for everything in the game, including lockpicking, salvaging, mining, shooting the guns on your ship, shooting the guns in your hand. This is one of those games that you can tell was made by a tiny team that didn't really have access to a whole lot of like stuff to really make a lot of the systems visually pop, but simultaneously the sheer volume of content they've actually gotten in here is pretty impressive for a tiny team. It's almost as if they thought to themselves like, what if we took EVE Online Space Combat with sort of like the toggling turrets that like rotate around and then they fire and the capacitor drain and everything else and then we added like a ground team layer to it and you know what if you could survey planets and what if you could like mine asteroid fields and sure what if there was stations and different factions that own those stations and they had their own vendors and like if you make friends with them you get access to loot and things like that that you normally don't have available and it just seems like one of those games where they just kept adding systems to it until you look at it now, like all these years later, uh, and it's got kind of a robust menu of things for the player to do. Looks like we've got, oh, we've got some of the phages over here. So these are the zombie guys I was talking about, the raiders. Let's move over to this side. We'll tap him real quick. We'll get him with a thermal shell. He's the elite one because he's got like a little skull on him. We'll put her barrier up just in case there's more of them back here that start shooting. But it looks like he's got some of, the, some of the mindless ones with him right now. And so these ones right here, there's normally like one that's in charge and he's like sentient. And there are like varying degrees of sentience when it comes to the zombies. Like some of them are like full on ghouls from Fallout where they're intelligent and they can have a conversation with you and they know what they're talking about, and they can build and fix starships that they then load up with zombies to, like, invade stations and eat everybody. And then there's also kind of, like, mindless ones, so I guess there's sort of, like, that influence. I guess it's something like Fallout, where I guess you've got the feral ghouls, and then you've got the ones that are still sentient and aware of what they're doing. I can shoot from right here? That's amazing that I have line of sight on that. I didn't expect to have line of sight on that shot. All right, unload on him. Hey, we dropped the leader already. Good stuff. Go ahead and rotate so you get a little bit closer. And then, can I get a shot off from right here? I can? Well, thank you for that. Let's go ahead and dump a couple rounds into him, and then I'll advance a little bit over on that side, too. You do have different stances. It's not like a huge part of the game, but you can put your character in like a kneeling position uh, to make them aim a little bit better when they're in combat, so these sniper guys that are in the back with long rifles and assault rifles. Different weapons have different ranges. Uh, so, oh no, they've got one of the wizards. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen one of the initiate zombies do that before. Damn, she throwing fireballs, dude! Okay, alright. Uh, there are psychic abilities in this universe, if that's the kind of thing that interests you, and that's the kind of thing that you're into. Uh, this is not one of those universes that is entirely based on science or whatever else. This is a universe where you can eventually, from what I understand, get like energy blasts and things. One of the starting dungeons I did, I met like a sentient floating crystal that said I was special and like unlock some kind of potential or whatever. It didn't have any immediate gameplay effect, but they said it'll come into play the next time I go to one of those ruins. Yeah, go ahead and hit him with the little AoE right there. Whip around the corner on this side. Got enough left for a burst fire. Oh, I reloaded on accident. Never mind. Uh, you can't shoot for the head. I think if you hit them in the head, it's always a crit. And then if you shoot for the legs, it hobbles them. And it makes it so that they have to spend double MP in order to move. Or double AP in order to move. If you shoot them in the arms, it cripples them. 
and I think that like increases the cost of all their attacks or something like that. We gotta move her up nice and close, otherwise the shotgun's not really gonna be that helpful here. But since that one's healing, I'm gonna go ahead and mag dump that one. Because I've had a couple of enemies in this game that are just like crazy healers that all day, every day can keep themselves in the action. Luckily, they don't really seem to deal that much damage, so I think we're in good shape. On my last level up, I went through and I just gave everybody huge amounts of HP because I noticed that you get a lot more mileage in this game about around being able to like soak the first few turns of damage uh, versus trying to out DPS the enemy. So if you dump all your points into like ranged combat, you'll maybe get like five more damage on each shot, whereas. Most enemies' damage seems to be in the realm of, like, 7 to 10 right now. And dumping all your points basically allows you to soak, like, two or three more attacks and let you outlast the enemy. So I swapped tactics while I was leveling my characters. I'm only at, like, level 3 or 4 right now. This is one of those games that you definitely want to, like, zone out. And you kind of want to put on a podcast or something while you play it. It's a game with a lot of things to do and a lot of things to farm and a lot of activities to get up to. And I'm not even going to be able to show you most of them because it costs a lot of money to kit out your ship. And I'm in the process of kitting out my ship right now, which is why we took this little bounty hunting mission to see if we can find whoever in the hell this bandito is that's down here. Can you finish that? Nope. Bounce the round. Okay, go ahead and stab the zombie with the space spear. Good stuff. Uh, we've got ourselves a gravy sword over here, which is looking pretty spicy. It's only got one mod slot versus the two on my other weapon, but I might give it a look. Uh, you do have to supply ammo in this game. You do have to repair your weapons. You can salvage things that you find inside of dungeons. I haven't played around with it yet and so I figure we'll probably actually do that right now because some of these things that requires pistol level six does it really because that damage doesn't look that great on it maybe it's just that the uh, procedural weapon rolls and stats were not so good on that one that gives agility and endurance though it's not bad for our fighter I would definitely keep an eye on it let's go ahead and move on in we've got a level up to play around with though so leveling up in this game is really really simple that's it uh, so what you want to do is as you do activities, you'll get better at those activities. So you can see that my main character right now has a couple in first aid from healing himself with med kits and stim packs and stuff like that. He's getting better at hacking from opening crates. That's basically lock picking in this game world. These are all the different types of weapons you can play around with. There's everything from space brass knuckles that are charged with, you know, radioactive energy. Uh, to rocket launchers, to mini guns, to pistols. Any weapon you can really think of is probably in here. I'm specialized in rifles right now, and I'm trying to get that up to level 10 because I think I get my first perk when I do that. Uh, you get these perks right here, and when these perk slots unlock from you leveling up, you can slot them in, basically. And then there's also passive perks that you just get as you move down the chain. And so lots and lots of customization and things in here, especially if you're interested in doing all the crafting and everything else. But for now, what we need to do right here is we need to apply five points. So with five points, I'm kind of tempted. So we've got... I wanted to put some more points into dexterity to help out with my hacking and make it go faster. And that is raising up my damage like a little bit with my weapons. Keep in mind, the damage you see reflected is going to be mitigated because everybody's wearing armor in this game. So I'll throw that in there right there. I'm still a little bit squishy, but I think it'll do perfectly fine. And then I need to distribute all of this gear. If you've got extra stuff that you don't need, you can just salvage it and it'll give you a bunch of like nuts and bolts and parts and things that... I still haven't found the menu where that's listed anywhere. I think it's just in the salvaging menu. It tells you how many you have over on this side. And if you have enough of them, you can make armor. You can craft things. Uh, usually, you're going to add all your junk over here, uh, which you would normally sell for money. But, like, if I tell her to disassemble all that stuff, I guess we'll probably go for the fail rate chance. We're trying to level her up anyways. So we can choose between focusing on making sure we actually get parts out of the thing that we're salvaging with a higher success chance, but she doesn't gain XP from doing that. You have to, like, take some risks in order to get the XP, but that'll help clean out the inventory, too. I think our target, unless there's anything lootable over here, is going to be down inside this area, so let's go get them.
I think we've arrived at the place where our target is at. I figured everybody didn't need to see, like, the entire dungeon right there. So let's see what's waiting for us inside this room. It might be easy and it might be bad. He's trying to bust shotguns at me, hit a crit on his first turn. The man's an animal. No shot from right there, though. Let's go ahead and put this thing in burst fire mode. And let's just light up Shane Ewen. 14 damage right there. Not what I was hoping for, but it'll have to do. 13 on that side, so that should work out fine. No AP left. I need to get my melees into range. My melee character is by far, like, melee is really rewarding in this game. If you can close the gap, melee is gross in this game. It's, like, really, really good. She's got a shotgun, though, which hits everything as long as it's inside that little AoE. And then we'll light everybody on fire with thermal rounds. We'll put up a barrier just in case they want to shoot back. We'll move our melee up with that new greatsword that we just picked up because, you know, it's a space fantasy game. Why wouldn't we have a super awesome greatsword that we can charge into combat with? Like Aragorn, you know what I mean? Like the returning triumphant king. It looks like these guys aren't elites. I don't know if our target... Okay, our target is that cyborg in the back. We gotta get him. Fair enough. He healed himself. I only damaged him for like one damage. Interesting. Sometimes the AI is gonna do weird stuff in this game, alright? I've come across... Oh, he healed the girl in front of him. Got you. Sometimes the AI is gonna do odd things. This was not one of those times I... Thought it might be because I've seen enough weird things the AI does from time to time. But sometimes they'll like hit a trigger with their HP. And once they hit that trigger, uh, they will try to like run away and like hide or something. Oh no, dude, I ran out of ammo at exactly the wrong moment. Right when I was cleared to bust shots. I do have an SMG on her, but she can only like single tap it right now. And I don't really care about that. I need this nerd out of the way. They're blocking off the hallway. But it's great sword in time. So this should be a nice and easy clear. Nine damage on that defense right there. I'm going to try to taunt. It never seems to work for me. I've tried to taunt a lot of people. When I initially started playing the game, I was like, oh, got it, dude. This is like my tank character. Luckily, he whiffed like all three of his shots because he's dead set on trying to kill um, my character, whose name I'm not trying to use in the middle of an episode because it, uh, this, how, this is my naming architecture, all right? My characters are always named like Booty Fart or like Ultra Fart or something like that because intellectually I'm still an eight year old. Pretty dodgy. We may have to burst fire him a little bit. I don't know. He's got a pretty solid chin on him, too. He hasn't whipped out like a rocket launcher or anything, though. Sometimes you get down to the bottom of these facilities and there's some guy with a minigun at the end of the hallway and he's like, Wee! Hitting for, like, 40 damage every turn while you're trying to stay in cover and, like, stay out of his way. And it can get painful. Oh, he's got a really high armor value. Okay, we'll get him with the guaranteed crit right there, then. I don't think there's anything else I can do with that weapon. Just put her in block mode. And just keep firing shots at him. I mean, we gotta get that green meter down right there, and I think that should nerf his resistances, I think. Like, I think the shield... There we go. I think we got his shield down now, so he should be taking full damage, I think. Uh, there's different like Oh no, dude, he used a barrier ability to get it all back. This guy's really trying to be a thorn in my side right now. But then again, I guess he is like a highly upgraded combat android, so, you know, what are you going to do? You think you can get him with a sword a little bit? I was going to say, if I can just get some natural damage on this guy. There we go. We dropped him. We rendered justice on the wanted criminal. He dropped a big red crate, too. I've never seen an enemy do that. So we got a Halamis laser sight. Oh, yeah. Did I mention there's also gun modding in this game? Like I said, you can tell that when somebody was making this game, they were like, ooh, and then that would be cool. And ooh, oh, then that would be cool. And yeah, dude, I think we can add that too. That shouldn't be too hard to add. And so there's so many of these layered systems from other games inside what is effectively a sci-fi dungeon crawler with EVE Online space combat that, like, you're not going to be able to do the space combat for a while until you upgrade your ship. But I think I can teleport out of here. I've got the Hearthstone. I bought it from the first Dungeon Master guy. 
And so once I kill, once I once I get my guy, I can just teleport out back to the ship. All right, so we're back up out in space. Uh, space in this game, actually, you control with WASD, which is kind of interesting. We can translocate if we can find a gate. Let me go ahead and open up my stuff that's here. It looks like there's a parts processing plant here. I should probably survey all these planets, too, while I'm here. So we already got Oa, too. Let me go get all the planets scanned real fast, because you get paid, like, eight grand per planet that you scan. And I started out with the, with the scout ship that's specifically built for scientific exploration. And so... I'm kind of not using my ship for the thing it's meant to do if I don't scan things on the way by. So that's got an ore deposit on it. That's right. You can also send down mining drones to mine planets if you want, if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Let's go back over to OA4 over here, and we'll scan that one. I don't know if I can scan it from here. Can I scan it from here? Hey, that works for me as long as I'm not going to fly over there. We got OA5 on this side. It looks like we got a pirate ship over there, too. Let me save my game real quick in case he aggros, because we could lose a fight to a stiff fart right now with how our ship functions. There will be stations and things all over the place. You can go into them. There will be new mercenaries you can hire there. Uh, all of the characters are kind of procedurally generated in this game. They just come up with random names or whatever, and they're like, yeah, I'm a mercenary for hire, and then you can just add them to your party. Uh, the good thing is they start without having all their skill points applied, though, which means you can effectively customize all of the characters in this game to do whatever the hell you want, which is great. There's no flying around the galaxy trying to find that one guy that's really, really good at having the stats for melee or whatever. Like, everybody starts out with five and everything, and then you apply their stats as you see fit. In order to leave this area, we gotta get to the jump point real fast. There's, like, these little sling gates that'll take us to... the opposite of real space? I don't know, it's kinda like wormholes. There's kinda like a realm in between realms, kinda like the Warhammer 40k warp, that allows you to get around faster, and this thing allows you to access it as long as you have an FTL drive. When you get there, you just engage the FTL drive over here, It'll take us back out to warp space. Uh, we got to drop this quest off with the guy that gave it to us, and hopefully it pays like 50000 because that was a little bit of a... There was a lot of guys to kill down in that facility. I haven't really participated in the storyline too much. I've been obsessed, so... This game early on in the tutorial is going to be like, Hey man, you should go and kill some space pirates to earn money. I would urge you, do not do that thing. That thing is a terrible idea. Uh, if you start out with the combat ship, you can probably scrap with people. But if you start out with the merchant ship, or you start out with the exploration ship, you are not equipped for combat, and they are going to absolutely body the chin off your face. It's going to be rough. So if you wanted to do space combat early in the game, make sure you choose the combat ship as the first thing. There's also directional shields. So in this game, you don't have, like, omnidirectional shields. There's a little thing right here, and you got to watch where the enemy's at as you're, like, orbiting them. And you've got to, like, set your shields to a side in order to absorb that damage. There, there's a bunch of little interesting layered systems inside of this game. And while just about everything here has, like, a layer of jank on it, I think the sheer body of actual stuff to do shines through. So we've arrived at our location. I'm going to get caught up in the gravity well but we can just land on the planet real fast on this station. And I think the guy we're looking for is over in this hallway here, from what I recall. I think that's where I picked up the quest from. You can talk to all these people in the space stations. Sometimes they have missions and jobs for you, but usually it's the faction that owns the place that wants you to go do little peacekeeping missions and stuff. So we got awarded 30,000 credits for that mission. We got 200 reputation with House Kilivon. And then we got 60 tokens. They gave me two free missiles. It looks like they gave me a little bit better of a combat rifle. It looks like they gave me a really good combat armor for that little operation. Let's have a look at all this stuff. So the armor that we just picked up is right here. Ooh, we got a legendary Halamis Hel- Ooh, okay. Strength and charisma on that bad boy. Nice, dude. I don't know if it fully fits into what I'm trying to do right now. Like, what does her armor do? I mean, it's two more armor, and it still gives her strength and a little bit of extra charisma, so I'll throw that on in there. 
That right there has got 11 with a plus one to perception. Perception is for ranged characters. And so I think he's about due for an armor upgrade. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I've skipped him for armor upgrades a bunch of times. And so we might as well get that slotted in. Mm, we got a legendary shield, too, that gives huge amounts of resistance. That'll be nice. Let's go ahead and throw that onto our main character right there. We're now like 40% immune to thermal da or to kinetic damage, 40% reduction on kinetic damage, so that'll be really nice as well. And the game likes to trickle out these little upgrades for you to play around with. The only thing that I would warn you is that if you mod anything on your character, so if you put mods on your guns, those mods never uninstall again. So think of your mods as one-time use only. We got a legendary glove of strength and endurance, which is rad for her. So we'll throw that on real fast because that's just flat damage that gets added onto her character. So that'll be good. The Kilavon rifle isn't better for our character, but it's a pretty solid upgrade for him. It gives an extra couple damage. I haven't been using his pistol a ton, but he may be ready. Oh, he's got level six pistols. Well, never mind then. So with all that loot on board, we also have a bunch of level ups we got to play around with. So we got five points to play around with on her. I would say let's just dump it into damage, dude. All the damage in the world. For her, she's got enough endurance to be in the front line, so I'd probably give her two more for endurance because she's playing with shotguns. Perception might also help out with that, so we'll throw that on in there. And then he has good perception, good dexterity, Let's boost up dexterity a little bit just to make sure that he's clapping as hard as he can with that rifle. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to play around. We haven't even talked about ship customization yet. This is the ship panel. You can refine ore and you can turn it into crafting goods. There's trade in between different systems. I mean, your ship has all these different parts on it that you can swap out. These are parts as well. These are weapons. Uh, these over here are like how good your stuff is. You assign people to different quarters. Uh, in order to make them better. And so as I fly around the galaxy, my character is getting better at piloting. My melee lady is our electronics uh, specialist. The targeting station is being run by our shotgunner. Our weaponry station over here is being run by our sniper. All these stats go up and down. You can repair parts on your ship. You can repair your hull with stuff you have left over. This is the faction vendor right here. They have really, really rad stuff, but you got to stack up their little company scripts in order to make it work. But I think we may be in the market for a new ship part right now. Uh, there are other ships you can play around with as well, in case a lot of them, in fact. I was actually kind of surprised when I went to the ship vendor just how many ships there are available for purchase, each with their own unique module. Like, there's mining ships, there's cargo haulers, there's fighting ships. They are quite expensive, uh, but whatever you want. I mean, there's a bunch of ships on in here that you can mess around with. It's totally up to you what you want to do with your ship, what you think sounds like fun. But there's a bunch of ships inside of here. You can read the, you can read the descriptions and whatnot if you wanted to. You can trade in your old ship. It's going to take me a little while to farm up the cash for a new ship. But I was interested in maybe like a new thruster to get around faster. I don't know if they have a good thruster in here, but a thruster would be good. And of course, this is the inner systems. Like these are all level one systems that I'm in right now. If you wanted to see the world map, there you go. There's all the places you can go, each with their own factions, each with their own mining points, asteroid fields, salvage fields, whatever you feel like you want to do, you can cruise on out there. Uh, the color of the dot out here is how they feel towards us. So there's like pirate systems, there's friendly systems, there's systems that are like, who is this guy and why is he here? I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And, like, the further you get away from the middle, the harder things get. And I'm guessing there's going to be even better and even better equipment. So, I do wish I could zoom out a lot further on this. I haven't played around with, like, this trade net thing yet to figure out where the good trade contracts and things are so that you can go, like, mine stuff and bring it on back. I need 100,000 credits for a mining drone before I can even start mining. 
And then I've also got to have a refinery installed on my ship. Like, i got to have a bunch of other stuff. And so there's so many things that, like, are not conducive to doing a first impressions video in this game that you will come across. Uh, because this is fundamentally one of those games that Total Biscuit talked about where it's very, very, very incredibly difficult to properly preview or review a title like this because it requires just such an enormous... Uh, sort of time allotment from the player just to get to most of the mechanics and you've got to like build specialized ships in order to do certain things you know uh, but we do have decent money right now so I should be able to do something fun on out here I'll sell off my junk right there too so I think I'm gonna buy a warp drive and with the cash that's left over for getting this thing moving I did want to see if I could pick up a new turret because we've got a lot more energy generation right now, too. And what I found is when I tried to do space combat, my capacitor runs out too quickly. So I'm kind of thinking we swap things out for, like, Gauss cannon rounds or anything that actively uses less capacitor, I guess. There are turrets you can have that just convert, like, the energy of your ship into firing at the enemy, but they tend to lean very, very heavily on your capacitor. And so they've got that little EVE Online implement in there, too. I guess I'll buy a ship turret. Kind of curious about mining, so I kind of want to get some mining lasers, too. Like, I know in my starting system there was a mining field, and I'm, like, really, really interested in fiddling around with that. Sort buttons are here. Salvaging is easy. Stashing is easy. Really, this is one of those games you just got to sit and fiddle around with. And then the pure breadth of what they have here sort of dawns on you at one point or another. It becomes one of those things, and I'm like, okay, I want to fiddle with this a little bit more. At least that's what happened to me. So we need a new warp drive. We'll slot that on in over there. Apparently, we are now effective according to this guy, right? We're, we're effective, all right? Hopefully that'll help my shields recharge faster, too, now that I have a lot more, like, energy production on board. We also have these mining lasers. I'm not going to slap those on, though, until we actually get to the place that we're trying to be at. But this ship turret right here... So it looks like I only have the one slot right there for a turret. The rest are missile mounts. So I'm going to have to farm up some more money so that I can have a missile mount. But the point of this video was just to bring it to your attention that, like, hey, this game is out there, and it's got, like, a lot of things going on with it. And while it's kind of janky, it's also kind of awesome if you like little indie titles that just allow you to fiddle around in space and have a good time. I've been having a good time with it all morning. There's been no point during my morning and afternoon with this game that I was like, nah, and, like, wanted to turn it off. I was continually being introduced to new mechanics and new things, and like five or six hours in, I'm still getting like giant tutorials about mechanics I didn't even know the game had uh, that will pop up on screen. You'll read like 10 different windows and be like, huh, I didn't even know that I could do that. All right, sick. Anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today was a bit of a sleeper hit for me. The game is called Stellar Tactics. We checked it out probably a year year and a half ago. I didn't check the date on the video. But anyways, and I don't think it really dawned on me how many things there are to do in this game. And it was one of those cases where I played it for like an hour or so beforehand. This time around, I put a lot more time into it than last time. Probably three or four times as much time into it. And this is an easy pick if you don't mind a little bit of jank and a little bit of assetiness. As far as things that I would focus on, I would probably focus on actually making the iconography a little bit more identifiable. There's a lot of armors and stuff in this game that all kind of have the same graphic and the thing, same thing going on, and it gets kind of disorienting inside the menu. So maybe like an icon overhaul might not be a terrible idea. But from there, it's all about just learning the game and its menus and all the little things that you can do while you're out in the galaxy and then just taking random jobs, working on the narrative whenever you feel like doing that, mining, refining, trading, all that kind of stuff. Check it out. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for stopping on in. That's about all I got for you. Bye, folks.